Hello, there is just a chance this is working, in which case, let's go to that one. We turn that one off and we do that one. Just to prove that it can happen. Right, this is GKIS color. Anyway, back to what should be sensibility. And hello, there is just a chance this is working. In which I think case, that's working, so we go cut. Let's go. Boom. <laughs> Right, ho, that's that done, that one. Turn that one <sighs> and we do that one. Just to prove that it can happen. Right, this is GKIS color. Anyway, back to what should be sensibility. And hello, there is just a chance this is working. In which I think case, that's working, so we go cut. Let's go. Boom. <laughs> right, ho, that's that done, that one. I can hear all sorts of things happening, so I've no idea what's happening there. Desktop audio should not be playing out of there. No, I think that's okay now. Anyway, if anybody's watching, you can tell me if there's a problem. It takes that's, that's a long latency. I had to restart OBS. I, I nearly broke it. It was um, one of those things where I clicked on something, something happened, I didn't know what was happening, and then something else happened, then something else happened, and oh my god, it all went wrong. I ended up with a picture of a picture of a picture. Very pretty if you get infinite feedback. Very pretty. Anyway, I'll take these off. It's really strange when you're hearing yourself about four seconds after you've spoken. So you can actually do a complete sentence and then whoosh, you hear it. <laughs> it's not like the mobile phone where you only get a fraction of a word. It's a full sentence. Right, anyway, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's another stream, another car crash. It's, oh, apparently Ian Dale's just gone live. Don't need to know that. LBC. This is Gary from Gary Keep It Seek. Keep it secret? Yeah, that'd do. Gary, keep it simple in the UK at 20 hundred hours near enough. Well, it's now 2003. BST, that's British Summertime. Or to anybody who doesn't know what British Summertime is, it's GMT plus, GMT plus one, which is, um, you know, that time of year, really, I suppose. It means that we get up a bit earlier and go to bed a bit earlier and all the rest of it. But that's fine, because... The day is only 24 hours long, and that's what you do. Right. Anyway, I shall type something onto the thingy here. I've got four people watching now, so I shall type something onto here. And uh, say, I say, hello. Well, hello, everybody. And I've just put it on there, so it shouldn't take, take too long to come up. And, uh, yeah, there we go from there. Right. Today, I was going to discuss, I've, I've actually planned to discuss um, some of the f some of the problems that people are getting. Also, want to do the normal roundup. Techmoan hasn't done a video this week, which is always disappointing. I like Techmoan videos, and um, I enjoy I enjoy watching them. And you know, I hope he's okay because I know he was saying he was having problems with um, a little bit of health and family conditions, whatever it was, so I hope he's, he's not having a problem in that respect. Um, Recordology has done a, a couple of videos, he's done a couple of shorts and he's done a thing about about doing, getting a big haul of records, which looked quite impressive. I like that one. Um, let me see, who else do we normally talk about? Oh yes, Westlife. The Westlife has done a one on, <laughs> yes, it's... If I can, can I grumble without sounding without sounding petty? Probably not, but I'll give a go anyway. Um, v Westlife did one on the beat switch, which I did one on nine months ago, and his one is very good. It's probably better than mine, but it's just only just as accurate as mine is. And um, the only thing that I found a little bit irritating about it was that it came up on my feed and it said V Westlife has released a video. 
So this has firstly come out and I clicked on it and it said it was up 45 minutes ago. Uh, okay, and it had several thousand views. My one's been up for nine months and it's had less views in nine months than he's had in, well, about five minutes, I think. But then that's just the way YouTube is. So that's why I want to try and get my channel to grow because I want to be able to do the same sort of thing that the West Life does. I want to be able to put up a video and get lots of people to watch it because basically I'm a narcissist. No, 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 that's not right. I don't particularly like seeing myself on TV. Don't hate it, don't like it. It's just one of those things. But what I do want to do is I want people to be able to benefit from the years and years and years of knowledge in my head. And I just, you know, it's one of those things. It's, it's I do it for the best reasons. And, you know, I'd like it to be successful. But there we go. Anyway, what else is there to discuss today? Um, anybody here? Anybody here who wants to sign in? The chat is open. And um, it does say that there are four people watching it now. And we started six minutes ago, which is fine. So, what has been happening this week? I put up a video and um, it was on the, the tape, the Sony UX Pro. Now, I was absolutely, so, well... It was surprisingly enjoyable doing that video. I don't know whether any of you have actually thought about it, but it takes hours to record the, record the test signals, play back the test signals, sing the theme tune. No, write the theme tune, yeah. Um, that's a little Britain joke if anybody understands it. Right, yes, uh, to actually record the stuff and then to bring it back and then to actually label it all up. I could show you the, the, the folders. I've, I've shown you before, so I don't need to. But, you know, I have to go through it. I have to actually understand what the, what the pictures and things mean so that I can actually try and tell you. Now, m a lot of the time, that's pretty, pretty simplistic, as in you, know, you put up a chart and it says it's got a good response there and it's not so good there, and, and that's fine. But every now and again, you get one that's going to be a bit awkward and it... Uh, does something weird. I think it was the capture. I can't remember. One of them had a weird effect, which I've seen a little bit of before. Ah, Michelle Knight. Hi, how are you doing? Nice to see you here. Um, yes, I was going to say about the, the, the tape. It, it did a weird thing where one channel gave one result, one channel gave the other result, put the two together, and you ended up with a funny dip. Well, watch this space. You may find another one of those. Ah... Uh, and it's, I, I actually worked out sort of what that was, as in electric, electrically what it was, but I didn't know what it was in actual fact. So, you know, that's one of those things. Um, and when you when you get a, a tape like the, uh, the one we had all the problems with and we ran it on different machines, you're looking at it thinking, well, why does it sound like it does and what does that mean? And, and that's it. So if you're actually watching my videos on the tapes, recommend you do have a look because the figures are always accurate the uh, interpretation is 90 percent 99 percent accurate um but sometimes things come up and i may not give you the right answer as to what's caused it but the fact that it's there you can see so that's uh, that's one of the things oh alexa's just decided to have a strop <laughs> anyway um yeah so that was one of the things and when you, I, it takes it takes about 15 hours to make one of those videos and it's only a six or seven minute video i'd love to be able to play proper music on it i mean my idea of a of a, of a video would be uh, to have nice music good quality music something like i don't know don't stop me now and status quo and jean michel jar be able to play some of that and do some demos and, and some uh, run it on the on the machine, see how it goes. I'd love to be able to use the other machines and things, but we've got this problem that you can't do that because the sound quality issues. When we when we squirt the signals down YouTube, 
you've got to put in as pure as you can get, which I try, I do. And, the, and somebody asked the other day, why do I put the the second bit of uh, Patrick Patrickos on? And the so you've got the, the uh, zero dB, and then you've got the twenty minus twenty dB. Well, that's because those two signals are actually in scale. The Patrick Patrickos recording is sent to my video software and then I literally just cut it out of the uh, the audio track and plonk it in and it takes it in without altering it so that second playback is 20 dB down and that is because it's been recorded at the correct levels that is 20 dB down so you should be able to see what's going on um, oh apparently I've just gone live <laughs> that's what the notification said right okay um, so yeah, it's one of those things where it's it's done for a, a specific reason, and it's not the way I'd like it to be done. I'd like to be able to, I'd like to be able to have a fun time uh, playing the music, doing a bit of DJ and mucking about, giving you some examples of how stuff. I'd like to be able to. I've got four or five decks. I'd like to be able to switch between them. But as I said before, if I'm going to do a test, see, I'd like to do the test using the W1200 do the test and then play with the other machines so as I can show you what difference it makes. I mean, I might only do it two or three times because I'm not sure it makes much difference at all, to be honest. Because when you look at the recordings we have had of other machines, including the oh, the um, Toshiba one I've got, the, the rather good but simplistic entry-level Toshiba, which did the metal tape, when you look at those, it's it's not radically different and um i was i've been chatting to one of my one of my subscribers this week and he was asking about why i don't use the sony well i'll tell you why i don't use the sony i've got the T sony trk 47 which has got a wonderful wow well flutter figure and it does metal tape and it does um all the other thing auto detect it's it, it, I, I love it when you push the button and it goes does and the, and it just takes the tape in. You know, it, it's it is real state of the art. And if you if I'd had the system that it came with, it would have had a remote control. But I didn't get the remote control with it, and I haven't found one. However, it it is a lovely piece of kit, and it as far as I'm aware, it runs to full spec. In fact, that's one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to go through when I've got a, a few minutes. I'm going to go through all of the decks I've got. And I'll, I'll show you guys what the wow flutter and figures and things are. But um, he, he asked why I don't use the Sony. And I said, well, you know, the W1200 is current. Started off doing the test to show what results you could expect from a 1200. It was meant to be a 1200. Um, you know, if you've got one of these, you can, you can buy these tapes type of thing. Yeah, Michelle. You, you you came in a bit late. Why didn't you watch my one nine months ago? It's it's on there. <laughs> now, I'm not having a go, but uh, it, it's just the way it goes. The Michelle says she's learned a lot from the Westlife video this week about how the beat cut switch. Yes, she didn't uh, didn't know it was to do with cutting out the signal noise from the tape recording from the radio. Well, actually, it's not. Um, it's the it's for cutting out the. Yeah, you're right. It's wrong. Yeah, I, I, it's, I'm not going into it. Um, you are right. It, it does make it cuts out the whistle that you get with the AM radio when you're doing it, and not to be confused with the multiplex switch, which does something totally different. But people do get confused. So yeah. Um, anyway. Back to what I was saying. So it originally started off as being just a W1200. This is what you can expect if you use this and get these tapes. But then I realised that actually it had a, a greater value. Ah, Stephen van der Bush. I didn't know this channel nine months ago. But I didn't know what the multiplex filter was. Oh, good. Somebody. I was on the Westlife channel the other day looking through his comments. And um, somebody said... Right, uh, he, he said he was a sonic engineer and this, that and the other, got a PhD and he and was into 
uh, acoustics, but you never knew what the what the beep switch did. And now he was uh, he said, and the guy directly underneath him said, "Now all we need is one that tells you what the multiplex filter does." Uh, I thought I've got one of those. I did that nine months ago as well. Um, there's one on my on my uh, channel for the multiplex. There's also one for the beep. And uh, yeah. I, I shall have to recycle some of my old videos, I think. It's uh, something that uh, YouTube don't necessarily... It's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting problem with um, the way YouTube distributes stuff. If it goes out and people aren't interested, it gets a bad rating. If it gets a bad rating, it, they don't bother putting it out. But if they put it to the wrong people, it gets a bad rating. But if they put it to the right people, it gets a good rating. And so um, I've been involved with another channel that had gone to sleep and the guy's been re, re you know he's been tiggling it a bit and suddenly stuff that hasn't moved for it, it's a 15 year old channel stuff that hasn't moved for 10 years is suddenly being pushed out again because he's putting out new stuff and um yeah that's that's the way youtube works but it's strange <sighs> right now, I was just going to say, um, what I've got, uh, hmm, hang on, Michelle. question about turntables, do you prefer fully manual or semi-automatic? I would prefer semi-automatic. What would you prefer, Michelle? The thing about fully automatic, some people say they, they are detrimental to performance. I doubt that. I shall wait for an answer. Or shall I talk about tapes a little bit longer? Um, <laughs> this is really, really weird the way the... the um, because you've got double latency. You've got the latency of you typing it in. You've got the latency of me answering it then. So, um, yeah. My turntable, by the way, is a... Uh, it's on my channel. I did a thing on it. But it's one of these... Um, it's a Aowa. It came with a system. But it's the same as the very low end ones right okay you like automatic but you heard that manual performs better i do not believe that manual performed better i shall tell you for why seeing as you've you've raised Ooh, let's get into this one it actually fits in because if you look at the, the list i've got here it says, sound quality is today's main subject now when you look at a proper a proper turntable all you've got is a cartridge a tone arm and hang on steve edwish i have a fully automatic phillips turntable with a tray mechanism and a fully automatic dual cs410 oh wow right okay and nothing you've said there will, will change what i'm about to say because what you've got is you've got a tone arm which holds the cartridge You've got the pickup cartridge with the with the stylus needle, whatever you want to call it, and you've got two wires that run. Steve Van Wicks. Manual allows for more tinkering and fine tuning, but also to get things very wrong. Yes, <laughs> yes. When you've thrown it across the record, yeah. Okay. Um, when we're talking about sound quality, we're talking about the pickup. You've got two wires, well, two pairs of wires, because you've normally got you've got a single and earth, single and earth, left and right, obviously. If you go back in time to the original turntables, I mean, my AV amp has got a uh, a phono input, which is for proper for going direct to the cartridge. And if you go from there to there, you've literally got pickup wire, cartridge, um, yeah, cartridge wire, sticks squares at the back into the phono amp. If you've got one of the modern amp, um, turntables, they tend to have, because this is chicken and egg, this is really chicken and egg, they used to have phono inputs on the back of amplifiers because they had record players with phono outputs. And that was so you needed the two. And then they did away with record players and 
um, started going for CDs and things. So they took them took away the inputs on amplifiers and went for line level inputs, which then meant that you had to have the phono amplifier in the record player. So if you got one like mine, which came with a system, because it was easier that way, they just literally took it, it from the pickup to the phono amp, which is in the in the turntable, and then squirted that out, which went into line input. That's nothing to do with automatic and manual, I know that, but it does prove sort of some thinking that was going on. But if you go back to, in the old days, have you seen the recordology um, things about uh, the Garrard turntables and stuff? Because those types of the idler wheel turntables tended to be the ones that were used for automatic. And the thing about those was, and I'll see if I can find one actually while I'm on here, because um, I don't really need to see myself. The thing about those was that they... Uh, manual has a multi... Yeah, nothing changed. Right, yeah. They had a mains-powered motor, very stable, which went through a rubber idler wheel from a shaft to the turntable. And the problem with them is, um, and we're talking about things on stuff like... Oh, so I know exactly where one is. Let me find it for you, and then I'll bring it up on the screen. Bear with, I'm just trying to... Um, um, I was on it earlier on. It's one of these things... Oh, I'll I just. I tell you what, the easiest thing to do is just do a Google search. I'll do a Google search, and... D-A-N-S-E-T record player. O-R-D... P-L-A-Y-E-R. That's what I thought. Didn't say what came up. Yeah, okay. Um, go for images. Boom. And, yeah, right, okay. I can show you what I mean there. Okay, any of those will do. So, bear with while I try and do the display capture thing. Turn that off. And turn that over. Right. Now, any of these... And I'll change the zoom on here so that you can see them. Right. If you see that GPO turntable, which you could, oh dear, that's not wanted. Oh, that'll do. Right, that is, and it's got. Um, that's the wrong one. Let's see. I tell you, it's strange how this works. Anyway. Right, so it's got a, an automatic turntable on it. So you've got the arm there, if you follow the follow the little mousy thing. You've got the arm there, which steadies the records. And because it's a UK record player, we've got the, only the single spindle. We don't have the great chunky thing that the Americans have because of their, their format war that they had. So we only have, by and large, records with us. Unless you buy, get them from... Um, they use them like that in jukeboxes. Right, so there's your tone arm, there's your 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 dropping thing, and there's all, all of that. And now that's mounted. They've actually got the transfer screws screwed down on this. But that's mounted on this plate here, which is a the plinth, and that is sprung loaded. But that motor, which is a whopping great big lump of stuff, is hung on four or six screws underneath there and they've got this hard rubber wheel driving it so any rumble from the motor is going through the rubber wheel onto that turntable there and all of these different brands are all version, versions of the same I mean you can see where they, they got the modern versions from can't you but they're all variations on the same thing really and let's see there's a there's another one there there we go this is a really old one no yeah is it going to let me show? Don't want, don't want to join the newsletter. Oh yeah, that one's a semi-auto jobby. And again, you know, that's that'd be an idler drive. And the transit screw there is in the wrong position. That should be the other way up. You want that to be suspended, not rigid. But uh, you know, various things. That one's a totally different. That's a bush one. That's again has got the same. 
that's an idler drive you've got the same arm and everything there and the tone arm so they're all variations of the same thing but they are relatively rubbish which would be what people used to say was a was a bad thing about which people used to say was a bad thing about automatic turntables but what you're talking about now with your turntables and things like that what they've got in there is they've got within the within the um let me just get myself back up again right uh, i'm gonna do the fade boom right within the turntable itself you've got a motor you've got a belt and you've got on the middle of this other thing you've got so if that was let me just see if i can illustrate this uh, i could draw it but that's my, you've seen my drawings they're not very good right assuming that was a turntable in the middle you'd have a cog and that cog would only be active when you're moving the arm backwards and forwards if the if it's properly made and there's no reason why it shouldn't be that arm will only be active when it's it will only be affected by the auto mechanism when it's actually on there now the old old systems that they had you had quite a li little bit of drag on them but that was okay because that acted as anti-skate but on the new ones with the with the um light weight you know three tr three gram tracking you haven't got the the ability i mean we used to put pennies english pennies not not american pennies on the on the heads to, to make them track properly with the new ones which are all very nice and light yes it was a bsr in fact you'll find that 90 percent of the decks made in in the 60s and 70s 50s 60s 70s were bsr um your audio technical turntable hello i see sorry your audio technical turns over automatic i think just press start and stop and that's it yes because what all they do is literally you have this little lever when you push the button or the start and stop it just moves this thing in it clicks on the cam it takes it around part of re revolution and then it drops out it has no effect once it's dropped out it has no effect on the turntable at all and you want to have a modicum of drag or you want anti-skate on the actual tone arm anyway so no on a modern turntable in my opinion it doesn't have any effect whether it's automatic semi-automatic or manual the thing what they will do is though is you have to remember and it's one of these things that is un, almost you can't really quantify it but the cost of putting those little mechanisms on is going to be more than not having them on so if you've just got a turntable with a with a arm you've got one bearing on the arm one bearing on the turntable and uh that's it simple if you've got one that's got the, the automatic or the semi-automatic then you've got the activated lever and you've got the little pins and things and so you're probably adding oh probably 50p in manufacturing terms to the cost of the unit well by the time you've gone through the manufacturing and pricing policies of the company that 50p because you've got three or four bearings and a, and a couple of bits of plastic and somebody has to set it up right by the time you've gone through all that you you stuck another 10 quid 15 quid on the top price of the turntable and if you haven't then you've had to make something else cheaper because all of this is a balance of prices and this is one of the reasons what i was going to talk about sound quality today for so i'm really glad you brought it up because sound quality is very subjective it's very often price oh sorry michelle well thank you for coming you can always catch the replay so uh, have a have a good day and uh, we'll see you another time hopefully i should be on next week and uh, yeah and if you've got anything you can you can add to, if you watch the replay and pop, pop it in the i read all the comments by the way I do actually bother reading the comments. It doesn't take me very long, <laughs> to be honest. But actually, the last video had a lot. Anyway, so thank you very, very much, Michelle. And uh, we'll see you next week, hopefully. Um, yeah.
who have we got now? We've got um, Stephen van der Bush and we've got um, Wasim on the chat and we've got six people watching. Right. Um, if you watch a lot of the things like um, the Westlife and that, he takes stuff apart a lot just to see what's inside and you'll see that there's, there's no problem. There's actually a video I did on my turntable i took out the the phono amp because it was oh it was a very cheap um it's it was the like i said it was an akai or no it was aoa but it's just, it was made it's the same as the audio technicas the very the low end ones with the three buttons and um the i i wasn't sure about it and i thought well i don't need to have the phono amp. In fact, it was a bit of a pain because I had my um, line level inputs were busy doing other things, and I had one labelled phono, which I couldn't do anything with because this thing had a permanently wired in phono amp. Now the Audio Technica version of the same deck has a switch on it, and you can just switch it out, which is well worth doing if you can get a decent phono amp. And um, I so what I did was I. I literally took the amplifier out, put it in a box somewhere, and uh, left just left it direct wired out. And I tell you what, the improvement was absolutely amazing. My daughter, uh, she she had a she had a vinyl for Christmas that year, and we put it on, and she sort of, wow, that sounds so much better than it did. And you got to remember, she's not technically minded, although she's you know she is technically minded. She, she's actually going to, to university and she's studying to be a um she's doing the oh, stage management stuff so she's done these lights and sound and stuff so she does have a an inkling now but this wasn't at the time i'm talking about she hadn't done all that stuff so she um she was just hearing it from a well i heard it before and now i've heard it now point of view and that made a big difference now i was talking about um the video that I did on the Sony UX and a couple of questions have been raised by people and um, I thought I'd just cover them really today uh, I'm more than happy to take any divert me if you want to because otherwise you know as I said I will sit here and read a book <laughs> but uh, um, I, th this I thought was quite relevant when, because I did a video a little while ago where I put it next to it, the ATL and the AOA are the same as my dual as well. The dual has the switch as well. I tried the Phono UFO 20 preamp and it's better as well. Yes, I thought it would do. Um, yeah, that sounds about right, Stephen. The, the good thing about the UFO 202, of course, is that you can use it as a digitalizer for both line input and for phonos input it's a very useful piece of kit actually uh, i shall put a link in the description if anybody wants to be able to buy one i've got the 222 which is the one that doesn't have the phono amp in it because i didn't need one and i found it to be excellent so um, i only recommend it on the basis that it's not very expensive i think it's somewhere between 17 pounds and 23 pounds uh, they both are about the same price, and um, I don't think you can go wrong with them, to be honest. But there we go, that's just my opinion. What do I know? Um, and you've all heard what they sound like, because that's what I use to upload. Uh, yeah, I use it to upload to my W1200, because I need to be able to take it out of the computer. And uh, it goes in, t in both directions. Which is quite nice right okay so what was i going to say yes um the the signals that we get from our equipment ah bargain yes there's a spring there's an amazon spring sale on so it's well worth having a look a lot i've got the um browser that uh edge and if you go on to amazon it, preferably through my affiliate link but um i should that's in the description anyway if you go onto amazon and it will pop down a little thing saying there's a there's a there's a voucher for that 
but you've got to catch it when it on edge you've got to catch it when it's there if you go back later it's, it doesn't bring it down again no you missed that one which is a little bit irritating but you know there you go um yeah the um some of the things that people don't understand with the, some of this stuff is the effect of physics if everybody's seen the beat switch thing from v west life which i'm more than happy to push for him um and you know say it's very good i liked the way he demonstrated what a beat frequency was because it's um it's basically two frequencies being played at the same time or as he described it uh, he, he used a keyboard and he played two notes side by side and you heard the the beat frequency which was sort of so you got a beep and a boop and you ended up with a boop, 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 sound in between so you actually heard three sounds but only two were being produced and that's the point i want to try and make only two notes were being produced but you heard three now when you do when you're playing when i'm playing back the tapes on the tests that i do one of the things i point out is the third harmonic distortion um and that's because i use one kilohertz as being the reference tone the third harmonic has to be 3k and if you actually follow these these things through harmonic distortion it's it tends to be odds the it's the odd harmonics so it goes off at if you if you've got 1k as being your master tone as i use it goes you know three five seven nine etc it's all the odd numbers and if you really set it up to have the proper distortion if you for others if you use a proper square wave from a square wave generator you, and you put that through a spectrum analyzer you will see all these spikes but and this is the important thing they are only there because of physics they're not actually being recorded the signal that's going uh, sorry pardon me oh, something's fallen over the signal that's going onto the tape or into the system is literally a one kilohertz signal as in a square wave it's going on and then it's going off and it's re it's going to literally up across down across up across down across there is no other signal being put on there but when you use a spectrum analyzer you end up with something that looks totally different and this is why I did a video a little while ago where I pointed out that if you've got that signal on the spectrum analyzer it's the same as playing a three kilohertz and a one kilohertz and I actually did that and that was a quite a good demonstration because it sounded exactly the same to the ears but that doesn't mean that when you've recorded a one kilohertz tone with the, the um, three kilohertz wave bit coming up that it's a problem uh, I'm stumbling slightly because I'm trying to decide whether it's worth bringing up a picture but I think it probably is let me just bring up something and I'll I shall bring it up to you guys as soon as I can get it on the screen um, wasn't expecting that to happen bear with that's what I wanted right okay let's get rid of let's get sure of that one and I shall fade you across to my test card. Boom. No, it didn't work. <laughs> Try again. Turn that one off. And then go. Boom. Right, so now you have you can see my test card. Which means you can see all my pictures down the bottom there. Which are things like that and like that and whatever else. Now, what I wanted to show you here was if I go on to... Um, this on the side here is just the, the stuff I have for um, let's just make that bigger let's make that bigger oh, do, do, do. this is not exactly car crash but it's yeah you know, yeah bigger um, yeah so all the stuff on this side here is my files in something there it says video that photos for use and if I go into, oh, ignore that one. 
right let's go into Sony and I'll just use the Sony one because I've just done that it's not there PQR yes Sony Pro and that's the one right you can see that that's a TDK SA and that's a Sony UX Pro but if I go into the subfolders let's just make sure it's not there if I go into subfolders bear with bomb 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 it's a Sony one we're doing right what I wanted to show you here is that like that's a the the one the white noise uh, pink noise at zero dB and that looks gorgeous doesn't it and there it is at minus 20 and there we go again there's the white noise and there it is at minus 20 and you can see it's basically the same shape although slightly fluffier because obviously there's a certain amount of noise in there and then we got this which is the so the silence and then we got that which is the um, 20 dB minus 20 dB one kilohertz now look how pure that is this is where I wanted to this is the point I was trying to make here we got a pure signal this this level here is minus 81 dB now I know it's a fraction above it but that's so that means that's why you know that line there where the hand is now that little peak there that's three kilohertz there is at minus so I'm flipping read it minus 78 dB now that means that and that's at minus 16 is it 16 yeah no minus 18 so if you take 18 and you take so you take 78 from 18 you can see the range there right so that's huge and then you look at this one and it's at one kilohertz it's on the UX Pro zero db one kilohertz so there's your one kilohertz which is nicely peaking at zero db and then you've got this one here which is at minus 36 so that's easy that's 36 db down now the other one was a lot more down than that so that's at minus 16 or minus 18 so if you take 18 away from 81 you've got yourself what 60 odd db difference that's why you shouldn't overdrive a tape because whilst that isn't bad that is excellent that which is the overdrive you can see now this is where this tape really wins this overdrive where it's banging into plus four plus five on the on the display when you're recording it is actually replaying here at just just over plus two but the separation here between the three kilohertz and the five kilohertz see the five kilohertz has come up a bit but the three kilohertz is still there um so you can see there's the differences right that is not bad the difference is not bad but that is nowhere near as good as that and that's the important thing now I want to, if you look at here this is your zero db sweep you see now people don't really understand it really does go up to 20k look that really is well that's just under that's 19k and we've got there 6 db of, of noise above of signal above noise we've only got one two three four centimeters there we've only got one two three four yeah four centimeters there. so we've got four centimeters there so there we've got three centimeters or two centimeters depending on exactly which one we're looking at that's pretty damn good now, I know it's a, it's a type 2 and then you look at this one now look at here we've got one two three four centimeters there but even up at 15 uh, look at 16 kilohertz we've still got one two three four five six six centimeters or six squares of separation between the noise and the signal so that signal there is well above the noise level is what i'm getting at which means that you're going to get reasonable sounds out of that even up to that point and this is on a on a cassette deck it doesn't go that high apparently they specify f mm, 15k so yeah that is about right and they talk about it being 4db 
plus or minus 4 dB, so it's 8 dB swing. Um, ding, 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 ding. Yeah, so that, that, that one's perfectly on spec. But those, those figures there, that drop-off is not particularly great. It's, uh, it goes all the way up to there. But it's, um, it's all down to thing. But when I did the video the other week, which I'm pretty sure was the car capture, um, so I might be able to find that. A, D, 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 D. A, B, C, A, Bassif. Where is it? All right, there's the capture. And as you can see, a lot of work goes into this, finding out where they are. That's the pure signal. That's what's being fed in. And that's what the capture replays. As you can see, that cassette does not do as good a job. Mind you, it's a tight one. It does not do as good a job. But look at this. This is not so good as the other one. And then you've got this really weird, weird system here, which something I wanted to talk about. Here, you've got the very thing. So this, actually, unless anybody knows different, why have we got this at minus 20 dB, but we've got that at 0 dB? I have my suspicions. I don't know. I'm not going to say yet, but we've got the same here. Now, I will tell you that that is on exactly the same deck, the same mechanism, the same unit, and nothing has been altered as the one we were just looking at. But why has it got that dip in it? But not if you only look at the left or the right. It's weird. Anyway, back to what I was going to say. That 3 kilohertz on here is recorded. So that's a 3 kilohertz recording, and there's the... Harmonic distortion is at nine. That's three times the frequency. And so the, ne so the next one will be the same spacing up over there. So we don't get too much of that one. But see how big the distortion is. But when we've got this one here, boom. Uh, no, not that one. That one. See, that one's quite nice. That's the minus 20 dB. Yeah, it's there. You've got no harmonic distortion on that at all. And then you go to this one, which is the 0 dB, and there you've got the harmonic distortion. But what you've got to remember is that recording has not got that spike on it. That spike is only what you hear. It is not what's actually recorded on the tape. There, that does, does, does not exist on the tape. What does exist on the tape is originated from that. That's what the original signal was. And... I did do a demonstration on a previous thing where I ran the two tones that equaled a distorted signal. And it sounded, it sounded exactly the same. So I, I ran a 3 kilohertz tone and a 1 kilohertz tone together. Because what you've got to remember is when you're playing these things back, that 3 kilohertz tone isn't on there. But within your music there are there are three kilohertz tones and there are one kilohertz tones and there's all the rest of it and so they will be if you're whacking up this the the volume so that you're getting this distortion if i recorded three kilohertz on there as well as that at that level that would add to the three kilohertz there so the three kilohertz would go shooting through the roof and this would go shooting through the roof as well because that's the harmonic of it and the whole thing would be pretty damn awful. Anyway, I've probably bored the, bored the pants off you guys now. So let's get rid of that. And I'll go back onto here. And, uh, oh, got five watching now. That's good. Right. Anything else anybody would like to talk about? Because I wanted to just get that out in the clear about the fact that these signals don't really exist. But, they, but you do hear them. And it's not smoke and mirrors. It is real. And that is why things don't always sound right. It's fun. If audio engineering was a science purely, then I would I would know the answer to the question. Why do two speakers of a, of approximately the same size sound different? 
we've got a we got a um, speaker system which we've got on our telly and it's from the sony profiles and i'm pretty sure i can't find a sony profiles speaker Sony profile speaker. Boom, 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 boom. Oh yeah, it shows something. Shows the TV. Right, that TV there is is what I used to have. And you see that little speaker on the side there. I've got one of those. They were about fifty quid thirty years ago to buy. Absolute fortune. But they also did a bigger one, which you can see on this telly here. See, they also did that one, which was much bigger. These tellies were absolutely brilliant. They were Trinitrons, and they produced pictures that looked three-dimensional. They weren't, but they looked it. They didn't have speakers of their own. That television, that 20-inch TV, cost 650 quid, 35, yeah, 35, 36 years ago. And that those big speakers were i think they were 75 quid but the ones i got which was the smaller ones which i showed you just now which were on that one they cost about 50 quid now they are literally let's bring me back on um boom, boom. right they are literally the size of this box right now we have got a, a set of Sony speakers. You know the sort of thing they used to plug into Walkmans? And they're almost the same size. And they're absolutely naff. And those speakers, I think they're uh, 5 watt per channel. So they're only 5 watt speakers. But they are absolutely gorgeous. They, 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 they can make my daughter's ears... You know, they make, make her, my daughter's eyes water. Because I can put in signals into them. They go up to in excess of 18 kilohertz at a good sound pressure but they go all the way down to about 100 hertz but it's beautifully smooth and it sounds lovely and i'm not just saying it because i've got them i mean the reason i use them is because i got them the telly went went away years ago but we needed uh, we bought a tv one of the modern ones with um you know the really squeaky speakers in it and we, we put we put that on as being a soundbar with a, with an amplifier. I went out and bought an amplifier. Went out and bought an amplifier just to put on the TV because the one that came on the Philips TV, flat screen TV, was just so awful. It was absolutely awful. And uh, these things, you can listen to a concert on them and they, they they're, I'm not saying they're hi-fi, but they're pretty damn good. Whereas these things that we bought to go plug into the Walkman, allegedly 5 watt per channel, uh, you know the sort of thing I mean. I will bring up a picture of something similar. Um, if I can remember how to do it. Boom, 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 boom. Right. It's... Oh, it's on there. Amazon. Boom. Right. Um, PC speakers. I'm sure you all know the sort of things I mean. But... Uh, yeah, just trying to find the appropriate things. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, they're probably better than they used to be. But we've got ones that I'm pr I did see some a couple of years ago on here. But, uh, yeah, okay. If I bring up that thing, turn me off, and uh, fade. Boom. Right, this sort of speaker here. This 1995, it's about the money we paid years ago. The sort of thing to plug into a Walkman. I mean, we bought some of these during lockdown. My wife and I were busy making things to allow people to go on to Zoom. I mentioned it before. And the problem was when you plugged it into, the, into a telephone. Let's go back to me. When you plugged it into the telephone uh, socket, the earphone socket, or onto a tablet... The problem was that those you couldn't hear then because we were feeding sound in you couldn't hear what's coming out so we said to people go and buy yourself some cheap speakers some pc speakers 
and they were absolutely awful but they were fine for, for doing zoom with because all you needed was the ability to to hear what somebody was talking about most of these people were doing exercise classes and so they needed to send they needed to send microphone and music down to their customers and they just needed to hear people say oh when they fell off and things like that. so they just needed to have just a method of playing it back and um yeah the cheap and cheerful speakers they were awful but i've got speakers that are bigger than my sony profile speakers and they sound like the sort of thing well I, the reason i can't find them is because they're locked away somewhere um the the speakers i use on my computer are pretty pretty okay but you know how is that possible when all, and i've had them apart all you've got is the speaker driver and the box so what makes that so much better i the simple answer is money as in they cost a lot of money to buy but i'd like to know if anybody's got any ideas as to why and how a speaker of the same size as another speaker and by allegedly the same manufacturer one can sound like a pile of poo and the other one can sound like the sort of thing you'd be more than happy to listen to a concert on albeit not the preferred method of listening to a concert because you'd rather listen to it on something like uh, ps audio speakers but that's another story i haven't got 20 grand to spend on a speaker um how does that work i don't understand it i do understand a lot of things but that's one of the things i don't understand and i'd like to what have we got on here um that's because basically a crt tv with a flat glass screen at the front is that about? yeah um the sony profile was a very good low angle it was a professional monitor well let me get this right the sony profile was a semi-professional monitor it was a lot of money and it for a domestic tv but it was being sold to posh people in it was like an audio files equivalent so a video file i suppose and it was um yes you had the glass screen in front it was very often yeah it was very often um used in tv studios because at, at that time i was i was working in the tv industry and you'd go into because a t broadcast monitor would be two thousand pounds in those days and the a tv was sort of like 350 quid and then then sony bought out this thing which was very similar to a broadcast monitor much much better than a, a normal tv and they aimed it at video files they um a lot of tv studios because they need to have monitors that are not color graded that are not precise but they don't like to have rubbish so they, what they they did was they started buying these things and so you'd go into a tv studios and, and you'd, you'd see the, the the set in front of you you know with all the where all the actors were but around, dotted around the studio you'd have the profile monitors because they were so good and they did do a 27 inch one and the the circuitry in them was absolutely superb they were also multi-standard i used to be able to watch interference in color from france the english tv was in black and white but the interference coming in from france i don't suppose any of you remember getting lift what's called lift stratospheric lift on tvs in the old days because it was analog the signal on certain days went mostly spring and autumn uh, you would get a bit of a foggyish day and boom in would come the french transmitters or the dutch transmitters or both and they could literally wipe out the uk signals because they were the way it works is they the signal from an aerial the signal goes in sort of that direction it sort of goes up and it goes down all the way and and they they beam it that's why a tv aerial looks like well that's why a tv aerial looks like it does when it's on the roof you know you've got the folded dipole and you've got the, the 10 elements in front of it you're pointing straight at the aerial and, and the signal comes out of it but some of the signal goes up and if that hits something reflective in the sky uh, it's a very strong signal 
there's nothing gets in the way with it and then it comes down at the same angle it goes up so if you've got a transmitter that is 200 miles away from you and you've got 100 miles so 100 miles up it's all to do with angles geometry it's like playing snooker the signal goes up at an angle hits this hits the the ionosphere or the troposphere or whatever which one one happens to match the frequency and then it bounces down again now with cb and stuff it means that you can get italians on cb on, on certain days um without them using burners with tvs and things because they're transmitting so much power it, it, it normally it would be going off into space but it hits this reflective area of the atmosphere and bounces straight down again it comes down at a hell of a whack and uh, yeah it's quite good but uh, yeah the the profil was a really really good tv it was so good actually when my neighbor came in now this was a woman whose main ambition in life was to be able to watch coronation street and understand it bearing in mind um no I, I shouldn't be rude about her but she was a nasty piece of work but anyway she was at that point she was a um she's i'm just trying to think there's a tv character that you, you could have, you know. it was she was a typical mother she wasn't interested in anything other than her kids and she came over and she she asked something she was she was being pleasant this wasn't a problem um she came over and she asked us something and i said all right okay i went off to get something for her and i came back and she said is that a 3d tv I said, I said no she said oh isn't the picture good and it happened that she that we had a something i think it was um it was postman pat was on it and he, he was doing all the motoring around sort of up and down the hills and you know with his black and white cat and things but it really did look like it was 3d because you had the smoke screen glass in front and it actually the the graduations the bright to dark was so precise it was absolutely superb anyway that's enough talking about that because uh, it, uh, a, the, the annoying thing in or the clever thing is now a decent black and uh, sorry decent hd multi whatnot screen will actually do it but you know I I had a situation once where I had to go out and buy a TV when the flat screens were first coming out. And people didn't understand. If you look at the, at the LCDs, I've got a plasma. I've got a plasma screen, and it's a 3D plasma. It's got a 10 million to 1 contrast ratio. Now, that may not mean much to you, but that means that if you go white is white and as bright as it can be, and black is black and as black as it can be there on that tv there are 10 million steps between the two so that's that's quite nice it means that you can see the difference between mm, well i don't have that on this so you see the flare on my hand and you see the the skin thing you know that's not a particularly good contrast ratio but the picture of my face and stuff's not bad um that's how it, that's how that works but if you i had to go out and buy a tv and it had a 10,000 to 1 contrast ratio it was a philips cost me 350 quid for a 22 inch and i had to try and get the guy to um he he wouldn't sell it to me because it was the only one they had in the shop this was in john lewis and i take the day off to go and get it because my normal tv had broken and we needed a tv for the kitchen so I went over there and I because it was on it was on the internet as being there and I went over there and they had one in stock and he said, No, you can't buy it. And I said, What do you mean you can't buy it? He said, um, it's the only one we got. It's a demonstration one. I said, Well, so is there anything wrong with it? He said, No, he said, We can't necessarily find the box. I said, Well, I've taken the day off work, I've come over here and I want to buy it. He says, Well, you can't have it. I so I called I got his manager called down because I was a little bit peed off because I was getting this, this was unpaid this day off. And the manager came down and he said, well, you know, you can't have any discount on it. I said, I don't want a discount. I just want, I want that TV, the one that you've got on display. I said, what's the point of having it on display if you can't supply them? And I think that was the bit that, that swung in because he, he realised that um, there was no point in having a TV he couldn't sell because he couldn't sell it because he didn't have any more. So anyway, 
kind of long story short, I bought it away, wrapped in a in cling film, and uh, they found all the accessories for it. But it was wrapped in bubble wrap and cling film, and I got it home, and it's been it's on, it's been on the wall for years now, and it's great. But the reason I went for that was because it had a ten thousand to one contrast ratio. Ten thousand to one. The one that was next to it, which he was trying to get me to buy instead, which was about five pound cheaper only had an 800 to 1 contrast ratio. That means that the steps between bright and black, bright white and black, was 800 steps. Well, if you've seen a decent plasma or, or, or the new OLEDs and stuff, you would know that the more steps you got, the better. I mean, if you walk into a TV shop now and you see the, the, the huge, we're talking 60, 70 inch, OLED 8K TVs. You don't have to want to like it. You look at it and you go, wow, that is amazing. Well, I do. Um, and it's, it's purely because it is so true to life. But you've got the bright white and you've got the dark and it's, it's magical. And I, I, I like, I, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not a technophobe. I love this stuff. It's just a pity that it all goes wrong and we end up throwing it away. But that's another story. My, I've got this, the original Samsung 3D TV. You have to wear the glasses. Not these. You have to wear the, the glasses for it. And it's great. But when I bought it, Sky were doing 3D transmissions. The BBC were doing 3D transmissions. It was great. And we bought 3D DVDs. And we had the glasses and you had to put the batteries in them. And it was absolutely wonderful. And then they stopped doing the transmissions and the DVDs are not so easy to get hold of anymore. And uh, one of the pairs of glasses got 150 quid for a pair of glasses. One of them got sat on, which was a pain. But, uh, you know, wonderful, wonderful thing. I've actually got the 3D camera as well. It's got two lenses on it. It's the Fuji. And that, that's really good. It really makes you think you're there. But, you know, things are moving on. Anyway, anybody still there? Uh, seven now watching. Okie dokie. Um, that was the sort of thing that I was going to mention. Now, Stephen, um, yeah, reflections out of the box. So that's why I've got an, an Alexa, and it's one of the round ones, and the sound quality is very good. I'm not saying it's hi-fi, but it's very pleasant. And that was the one of the ones that was quite expensive. It's about the size. It's not the mini one. It's about the size of, of a grapefruit. No. Small melon, it's, it's like yeah, it's, it's about the size of a small melon, and um, they're great. I like those. I was involved in many many years ago about things like when you bought a CB radio. If you bought, a, would you buy a Binatone? Would you buy a Binatone radio? Would you buy a Binatone record player? I wouldn't. Not a Binatone record player, but I did. I would have bought a Binatone CB radio because it had a Cybernet 134 chassis in it, and the Cybernet 134 chassis is a very good, very good chassis, and it was sold under several brands, including most of the American names, and uh, Amstrad did it, and uh, yeah, I had a Binatone. It was very good couldn't get actually much better for the money but that was sort of the point I was going to make is that you never know what what equipment you're going to get and what it's going to work like the point about the distortion and stuff if you've got a tape that's being recorded by a machine and it is playing back on a different machine it may not sound the same because it, whatever distortions are on there will be replayed but they won't necessarily re be replayed in exactly the same way so if I use a tape on my W1200 and I play it back on my um, tech, uh, no, my Toshiba or my Sony it will play it back and it will sound wrong but it may not have exactly the same fingerprint so to speak what we showed earlier on on the screen 
with the the th third harmonic being so big it may be that on that particular machine the filtering would be such that it it wouldn't be so obvious but that doesn't mean that it's a better machine it just means that you are lucky and uh, that was that was one of some of the things I was going to talk about on there what else we got in here look well, all the official cassettes monster cables that's what I said before we did them last week CCC transmission lines uh, anything's fair game yeah I think that's about it really anybody got anything they'd like to ask because we've been on for it says um, a while now 69 minutes anybody got anything they'd like to ask anything relevant or irrelevant or state of the world more than happy to have a conversation about anything really like I say anything that anybody wants to put in the comments then that would be great any answers to some of the questions that would be great anybody want any help with anything put it in the comments or you can send me a message direct more than happy to try and help can't guarantee I'll be able to, that I will be able to help I can certainly point you in the, I might be able to tell you what the problem is I don't know that I can definitely uh, fix it for you so to speak but um, I can point you in the right direction just as a while well, I'm just waiting for any answers that might come up I just thought of reference to something I said it before I said to a guy once who was a very experienced design engineer and I said to him so okay what makes you such a good design engineer because we were we were mates so we could talk like that and he said I said how do you know so much he says I don't I said what do you mean he says well he says um it's not that I know so much he says I just know where to find out the information that I need to know so when somebody asks me to do something I know which book to go to to find the answer and then I'll work from there and I thought that was a good lesson in life because what that actually means is you don't have to know everything you just have to know how to find out everything and that's one of the things I tend to try and do when somebody asks me a question if I know the answer straight off, I'll tell you. If I don't know the answer straight off, I'll tell you. I don't know the answer straight off, and I'll try. And if I can, I will, I will look it up for you, or will point you in the direction of where the information can be found. Right. So, Wasim, I'm looking at to buy a TV soon. Thinking of a 65-inch Samsung QLED. Yes, that would be rather nice, wouldn't it? I wouldn't mind one of those. If you've got a spare, if you've got a spare one, I'll have it. No, my, I think. You couldn't do you couldn't do bad by getting one of those just be aware that you want to make sure that some of the trick features are turned off I've seen somebody on YouTube talking about it I'm only referring to because we're in the UK something one this was oh you might find this interesting you know I was talking about how wonderful the the uh, profile was it was a wonderful set and it was made to American TV standards be and then they sold it over here because it was multi-standard. It would do PAL, CCAM, NTSC, NTSC 3.58 and 4.43. Uh, it was it was really wonderful. You just had to shoot the signal into it. But what they did do, which was a big mistake, was they used an American chroma delay line. Now, chroma delay line is the thing that lines up the colour with the black and white picture. And so they they did that and it meant that you ended up with people having you know if like at the right distance as you're looking at them as they're walking down the the road or at the road um they would have one leg would be maybe they were wearing red trousers so you'd have a red leg then you'd have a red shadow and then you'd have a white leg because the color was all was all shifted off slightly so you'd end up with with a red leg and a red leg and a, red, and a white and a white it was it was a mess and they they did a it did a service recall on them. All oh, right, so you're looking at your tones again. Uh, 90 cents back of LHC60. They look very good, much better than the chrome I sent you earlier. I was going to talk to you about that. Um, yeah, I will. I'll, if you've got that, you can send me that as well. I haven't actually got to have the opportunity to to view those things i know i sent you the email saying send me the next one which i did want you to do and i will check at it check it out after this is what i was intending to do so if you've got that one as well that'd be that'd be interesting and uh, i can we'll either talk about it next week or i'll send you an email or i'll do both <laughs>
more than happy to um, try and and fathom these things out. If you saw that bit earlier on with the with the step in the pink noise and the white noise at minus 20 dB, anybody got any answers as to what that is? That would be really interesting to find out because I've got some some suspicions, but I really don't know, and I'd like to. And I'm pretty sure that somebody out there does know. But uh, yeah, we'll give it a go. Right, the you can Stephen, you can actually check your uh, bit Bass FLH. You could check your your figures and things against the ones that I've got because you'll be using you're using the same tone. Um, the if you do the digitalization and do it at uh, what Audacity calls insane, then you'll have exactly the same the same signals as what I've got, and you can actually check them against the charts that are in my videos. And if you're really interested, I can always send you the originals. More than happy to help. And, uh, yeah, take it from there. Right, so, Wasim, anything else you, that you've got to say? Or, uh, Stephen, I know that uh, Kelvin was working this week. Last week his cat was ill, so that's why he didn't come in today. Um, so I hope his cat's getting, be getting better. And uh, we go from there. Right, Stephen, about step two types of material on the tape we'll get in. Um... I don't think so, but it's all it's it's possible. How can we test it? We're seeing. Uh, I recorded on a 1973 Maxwell UD C120 cassette a couple of years ago, and was very impressed with the recording. C120s have got a bad reputation, but they they do come out well. What's the print through like on that? We're seeing because the that's the thing I found with C120s. You have to be a bit bit left. Um, blah, blah. Try again teeth in you have to be a bit careful about your levels because of print through and contrary to what i was saying to Stephen earlier on in an email print through is something that is time dependent um magnetic recordings are not time you know they don't go off or settle in or bed in or whatever but what they do do is if you've wrapped a tape which by definition, by playing it, you will have wrapped the tape. If it's got a strong magnetic field on it, it can print through to the one underneath, and it takes time, and that will happen with time rather than immediately. So, you know, you check it a couple of days later and you find the print through is, is bigger than you thought it was. But um, that'd be an interesting one. Good. I sent you the, the tones, didn't I? So you can always try it from there. What I found was a problem using those tones, or was a good thing using those tones, was that... Uh, what's print through? Okay. If you've got a tune, for instance, or something that starts... Uh, so you're playing the tape and there's nothing on there because there's nothing been recorded yet. And then you get a, a tune and it goes... Ding, 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 or something like that. And then in the background you hear dum, 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 much much quieter and out of step. And what it is literally is where the tape where the tape's been rolled on the spools. So if you've got information on that bit of tape there, you will say imagine this is a nice big bit of tape. So you've got information here. And when you roll that over and it's now touching so the bit that we've got the information on is there but it's now touching the bit there and because it's a magnet it will actually print through and so when you then come to play it back it's a bit like it's a bit like writing on a with, with an ink pen rolling the paper up too soon and you then find that, that you've literally got the print through or if you think about it, when you're writing on a on a notepad, and you you press through, and underneath the, the page you're writing on, you've got a, a, a an impression of what you've just written. Well, it's a magnetic impression, and so with a lot of um, yeah. So when, no, not the previous recording, you can hear 
you can hear the tone or, or the sound of what you're currently playing, what you currently recorded. Um, now, let me think. I can find, if I can find it, if you if you want me to, I will do it now. I can find um, Amazon Music. If I can find more hits to shadows, more hit the shadows. Let's see what it comes up with. Um, it should be actually. I want to go on to Amazon Music, don't I? Uh, Amazon. Oh, that's Discogs. Don't want that. It was one that had it because it was something that they had a lot of problem with. Um, they had a lot of problems with it originally on the original because we had the record of it and you could hear it on the record from the master tapes because the shadows are that sort of group. Um, Amazon Music, A-N-A-Z-O-N-M-U-S-I-C. Come on. Come up, Amazon Music, sign me in. There we go, unlimited. Don't want that. Um, sign up and pay later. No. Oh, I hate, I hate Amazon for this. I mean, I love Amazon for so much stuff, but I don't like it for this because it's so hard to find things. Open the web player. That's what I want. Sign in. Uh, right here we go. Hmm. Let me see if I can get in. Keep you signed in if it says so. No, okay, it wasn't that sign that one. Let's see if that works. Yeah, here we go. Amazon Music. Right, I shall do the um cut across just so you can actually see what I'm doing and fade there we go right if I can find it on here and then I'll get it to play um, more hits the shadows Oh, you know, it's definitely was it said. Right, it was definitely a a, a proper record. But anyway, see if there's. I don't know if there's any there that would do it. No, anyway, I'm not going to waste any more time on there because I'm keeping you guys hanging around. What it actually is is um, let's get back to me. Fade, boom. Yeah, what it actually is, is the sound is recorded on the tape in a linear. So the sound is recorded on the tape in a linear form here. Because it's wrapped around a spool, the tape in front of that sound and behind that sound, so if I if I put a pen on here and shove that on there, so there we go. There's a pen, right? So that's the sound that we've just recorded on the tape. But because we're rolling it on a spool, that sound is going to press up against that bit of paper, and also it's going to press up against this bit of paper, and again there. So that sound is going to be is going to be wrapped in several layers of paper, which you can see effectively there. They're all going to be they're all touching that sound. So what you get is the first bit of, of tape that wraps around it gets quite a big magnetic imprint. The second bit of tape gets less and then gets less and then it gets less. So what you'll get is you'll get possibly four echoes. So, like on More Hits of Shadows, it goes dong, 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 de long, dong. Then you get dong, 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 de long, dong. Dong, 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 de long, dong. Dong, 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 de long, dong. Meanwhile, the first dong, de dong, de long, dong, <laughs> pardon the expression, is going, 
is going carrying on with it so you've got the whole thing is being echoed through yeah that would be right Stephen um, it, it, you can hear it I, I haven't heard that yet but I, that, what you're saying is exactly right to my ears to my eyes and the way you get around that is you don't record it at such a high level or you don't worry about it it's one or the other now with an e a c120 because the tape is so thin as in the thickness of the tape the tape is obviously if that's the width of the tape from top to bottom and the head is, is rubbing across there that's you can't you've got no control on that but the thickness there as in edge on that is something they can control and so they put a very thin layer you can some some 120s you can you can um, almost see it you can almost see where it is now some of the things that some of these people get really confused about on some of the cassette forums is they think that when you run it when you copy a cassette that it's being done in real time and things are all double speed and therefore it's all double uh, uh, and things are all wrong well because of the way magnetic recording works print through is actually something that they use have you ever thought about videotapes videotapes were printed they were not actually recorded now you're going to say what are you on about well i'll tell you if you go back in time to 1970 odd when when they first came out 1973 1978 when the video recorders first came out the only way you could copy a videotape was to literally plug one video recorder into another and press play on one record on the other and you would end up with a an analog copy which was fine it worked and i can remember being offered i think it was alien in in pirate yeah, yeah it was really high quality pirate it was so it was so much snow because every time you copy analog you end up doubling the noise figure and it's all right when you double it once you know it goes from minus well you add 3 db to it so that's fine but then when you doubled it again you add another 6 db to it and then you double it again you add it. anyway by the time it got to the sort of level that it was this was alien the, the movie all it was you could just see this blackness uh, and, and shadows moving within the blackness it was in a snowstorm it was horrible i mean it's a very dark movie it's all it's all down tubes and things and in the dark and things jumping out at you but all you could see was snow it was it was awful and of course the sound went muffled and muffled and muffled and horrible and that, that was that was a problem but what they did um professionally and you'll find pictures of it there are pictures of vhs banks of duplicators and literally they had a hundred or, or whatever vhs machines all the same not, and they were exactly the same as you'd get at home but they'd be just standard ones and they would literally go around switch all the switch all, all the, put them all into record mode which was just pushing the two levers down and then they would start the, the, the source play and then they would hit a, a button and all the machines would switch on at once and they'd go into record mode and they record and that was fine just one one recording but it took three hours to record a three-hour tape all right yeah 300 three-hour tapes no you had a hundred three-hour tapes but it you know it took you it still took you three hours to do that hundred tapes so it wasn't really practical for doing what they what they were selling sony was one of the developers they developed a printing system where what they did was they had a master videotape which was a tape that had all the signals that the videotape should have on it and they ran that through and they they pushed it against the blank tapes or big pancakes and they activated it with basically a bias signal but they just gave it a little bit of magnetic oomph so they used print through so they had a tape with the signal on it and you had a blank tape and they, as the two pushed together they then hit it with a little bit of fluence you know a little bit of abracadabra 
but actually a magnetic signal, which just made the the contact points right. Now that meant that you actually didn't get an analog copy, you got a stamping effectively or a printing of it. And so they could run those within I mean they, they must have lost some integrity, but they could run those through and they could run those through at any speed they wanted to. But it was print through that they were using. That was the effect of print through that they were using. And uh, yeah, magic. Sorry, I'm full of this crap. Um, anyway, I shall, having, having spent 10 minutes explaining something, which I wasn't going to bother, I shall say, um, please, any any subject you want discussing, two way, one way, we can, we can do it next week. Please forward me the information and I'll make sure that I do. Uh, if it's something I've got to look up, I will look it up. If it's something that I need to research, I will research it properly. And we can make sure that it's discussed properly next week. Anyway, I shall say goodbye now, unless anything else comes up in the next few seconds. And I will say thank you very much, Nassim. Thank you very much, Stephen. Thank you very much, Michelle, who was in earlier on but had to pop off. And anybody else who's who's been watching, and I would say th thank you very much. And yes, we'll see. Good night, all. I shall type it in here as well. Sorry, I've gone on so much, but you know, there's a lot in there, and I need to get it out. But I want to give it out, get it out in the way that people want it to get out. So thank you very much for coming along, chaps, and chapesses, and any any other um, prefixes. And we'll, I'll catch you next week. Cheers. I'm going to hit the go button. No, I'm going to hit the stop button.